In this lesson, we will continue to leverage JavaScript without writing JavaScript. To be more specific, we will create a photo gallery that uses a modal window. Let's dive straight into a demo of our finished product. So here we see a photo gallery, and let's imagine that I'm interested in the bear photo. If I click on the bear, we can see that the rest of the page is blacked out and the bear is front and center. In design, we typically call this a modal window, or just a modal for short. This means that we are taking the user's attention away from the main application or our main website, and we're presenting them with a new window. So let's say I'm done admiring the high-res photo of the bear. Users can return to the main page by clicking anywhere in the blacked out area. Or if I open it again, you can see there is an X that users can click. The particular modal solution that I'm using also features forward and back arrows, so it's very easy to cycle through the gallery. And you can even use the arrows on your keyboard to go left and right. We also see text in the bottom left corner of the modal window, which reads image six out of eight. And if we go back to the bear, we can see that some images even have captions. So this is a large bear. This is a caption for the strawberry photo. Now that's enough staring at a finished product. I'm going to hop over to a different tab. Now in this tab, there is no modal functionality in place. We can see that the photos are not aligned in a perfect grid. This bare bones page has nothing more than basic HTML and CSS. So this is the page that we are going to work on together to recreate the photo gallery grid layout and the modal window JavaScript functionality. Should be a lot of fun, let's get started. Currently, from an HTML perspective, our page is nothing more than eight instances of the image element. Now very quickly, let's review our recipe for creating this gallery. There are two ingredients. Number one is a bit of custom HTML and CSS, which we can write on our own, no problem. And number two is a pre-existing JavaScript solution named Lightbox, which is created by the talented Lokesh Dakar. So let's begin with the first ingredient, the custom HTML and CSS. And in particular, let's start with the HTML. So currently these thumbnail images are just that. They're an image, they're not a link. So we want something to happen when we click on one. So to turn a thumbnail image into a link, we simply wrap the image element within the A element, A for anchor. Within the opening A tag, we will use the href attribute to control what we're pointing to. So we want each thumbnail image to link to the high resolution uncropped version of that image. So for example, in my website folder, here's the web page, here's the images folder. We see that there are two strawberry images, strawberry-thumb and just strawberry. Obviously the thumbnail is the one that's named dash thumb. Let me open these two images for you. So here's the thumbnail and here is the high resolution version that we want to link to. So back to the HTML, we've wrapped the A element around strawberry thumb. So now in the href attribute, we enter the name of the image we want to link to. So it lives in the images folder and its name is simply strawberry.jpg. So if I save and refresh, we can see that now when I hover over strawberry, it's a link. And if I click it, it takes us to the high res version. Now, clearly this is not a modal window. We have not even plugged in our JavaScript solution yet. Our web page is simply linking us to a new page, or in this case, to a new image. So you can see that the URL bar changed to point towards the high res strawberry file. So we would have to now click our web browser's back button to get back to our web page. But that's okay, because that means that even without JavaScript, the user experience here makes sense. Users can click on a thumbnail to see the high res version. We want JavaScript to be the polish, the extra shine on top of our website. We don't want our website to be completely broken if JavaScript is not enabled in someone's device. So currently we are in great shape. Now we just need to go through the rest of the images and set up links like we did for the strawberry image. Now I'm not going to waste your time and have you watch me do that for all eight images, but we will repeat ourselves at least once more, just in the name of practice. So let's work on the doc image. In my images folder, here is the thumbnail, doc thumb, and here is the high res file, doc. So here they are. You can see that this thumbnail is much smaller than the full copy. 
So in our HTML, we just want to wrap this doc thumbnail inside an A element. Here's the closing tag. In the opening tag, let's add the href attribute and point towards the high res copy of the doc. So it lives in the images folder, and instead of doc thumb, its name is simply doc. So I'll save, refresh, now we can click on doc. There's the high res copy, and we can click on back. All right, now because I do not want you to die of boredom, I will pause the video and come back when the remaining six images are linked up. Welcome back. So now all of the images are wrapped in links pointing towards their high resolution counterpart. I'm not going to worry about CSS for the moment. So currently the images are not aligned in a perfect grid. We can circle back to that in just a couple of moments. But for now, let's get down to the fun part, the JavaScript, or in other words, the modal window behavior. We are going to use the JavaScript solution named Lightbox. So you can perform a web search for Lightbox. It's by Lokesh Dakar. I've downloaded the zip file for Lightbox. Here it is. Now I'm going to extract the zip. So the zip created a folder named Lightbox. And within that folder, I'm going to drill down to the JavaScript folder. And here's the file that I'm looking for, lightbox.min.js. So I want to copy this file into my website folder. So back in our website folder, let's move up and out of the images folder. Here's our web page, and let's move in to the JS folder. So currently the only file in here is jQuery. So I'm going to move this new lightbox.min.js file to live within our JS folder. And now we need to include this file in the head section of our web page. So over in our HTML, I already have jQuery included in the head section from a previous lesson you most likely will as well. So we can simply duplicate that line and in the new line, change the file that we're looking for to lightbox.min.js. Excellent, but we are not done moving files around yet. So in the folder that the lightbox zip created, there is also a CSS folder. And we are interested in the lightbox.css file. So I wanna move that into our website's CSS folder. So let's move Lightbox CSS. Perfect, now let's reference this in the head section of our HTML. So I will duplicate the line that we already have that's calling in our style sheet, and then just change the name that the browser is looking for, lightbox.css. Now with the Lightbox JavaScript and CSS files in place, we are one incredibly easy step away from having modal behavior. So let's scroll down to our thumbnails, Let's start with the strawberry image. So on the A element, I'm going to add a new attribute named data light box, and you can provide it a value of anything that you would like. So I will use gallery. You could use gallery one, gallery two. You could use any word that you would like. So again, I will use gallery. Now when I save and refresh, if I click on the strawberry image, you can see that it opens in a modal. Now very quickly, let's analyze what the JavaScript is doing. So the script actively searches the page for any links that have an attribute of data lightbox. And when it finds those elements, it hijacks the click or tap event. And instead of sending us to a new page to visit this link or this image, it dynamically pulls in the image in a modal window. So this means we need to add the data lightbox attribute to all of our thumbnail links. So I will copy and paste. Now I will point out that the value we assign to data lightbox controls which images are grouped together. So for example, because our first two links both use the phrase gallery, when I click on the strawberry, we see this note that says image one of two. So if I click the right arrow on my keyboard, image two of two. However, if in our second link, we provided a different value for data lightbox, so if we said image two or any other phrase, the images will not be considered a group. So now the right arrow on my keyboard does not do anything, and we do not see the text telling us one of two, so on and so forth. Now we want all of our images to be grouped together in a single series, so we wanna make sure that all of our links use data lightbox with a value of gallery. So behind the scenes, I will add that to all of our links. Welcome back. So with that attribute and value in place on all of our links, if I click on one of our images, you can see the text that reads image one of eight. And the arrows on my keyboard can be used to cycle through all eight images. However, if we think back to the beginning of this lesson when I first showed the finished product, 
you will remember that there are supposed to be forward and back arrows and also an X to close the modal. Now all we need to do for those to be in place is head over to the folder that the Lightbox zip created, look inside the IMG folder, and copy over these four gray images into our images folder. Now it's important to point out that the Lightbox CSS file is looking for these images in an IMG folder, but in our demo, we've named our images folder images, not just IMG. So to fix this, all we need to do in our text editor is open the lightbox.css file. And on the third line of code, we can already see an example of what we need to adjust. Instead of IMG, this should read images. So I'm going to perform a find and replace. On Mac, this is usually accomplished by holding the command key and simultaneously pressing F. If you're on Windows, you can hold down the control key and simultaneously press F. So I want to find all instances of dot dot image and I want to replace it with dot dot images. I will then click replace all, save. And now if we refresh, you can see the X is in place. And if I cycle through the images, we can see both the forward and back arrows are in place. Now there is one final light box attribute that I want to run by you before we work on customizing the thumbnail grid with our own CSS. So very quickly, let's talk about how to add a caption for these images. So let's imagine that we want to add a caption for the strawberry photo. In our HTML, we can simply add an additional attribute to the link element, data title, and we can pass it any value we would like. This is a strawberry. So now when we open the modal, there is the caption for that image. It's that simple. So the modal window aspect of our gallery is complete. And before we close out this lesson, let's write a bit of CSS to fine tune the grid of thumbnails. So for example, let's hop back over to the finished product that we saw in the beginning of this lesson. You can see they're spaced out just right. And when we hover over one, the rest of the thumbnails are dimmed and shrunk a bit, and the one that we're hovering over is rotated and there's a shadow. Now some could say that this looks cheesy or gimmicky. <laughs> I might even be one of the people that says that, but I think this is a fun exercise to practice writing CSS. So let's hop back over to our tab that we're working on together and implement a bit of custom CSS. The first thing that I will do is head over to the HTML and wrap all of our thumbnails in a div that has a class of thumbnails. So this way I have a unique class to target in our CSS. Now in our style sheet, create a bit of space, create a comment, thumbnail styles, and we're off to the races. Now before we write any CSS, let's give ourselves a goal. I want there to be four thumbnails per row. So in my style sheet, I will create a rule that targets any A element or link that lives inside the thumbnails div. I will float them to the left and give them a width of 25% because 25 times four is 100%. So we will fit four on a row. So let's save here. And because we used floats, let's go clear our floats. So I'm going to add a class of group to the parent thumbnails element. So this way it will clear the floats of its children. So if we refresh in the browser, we see that the images are perfectly resized and repositioned to fit four per row. Now, if you're following along, in order for your images to be able to resize dynamically, you'll need to make sure that your style sheet includes a bit of code for images. So towards the top of my style sheet, I have a rule that selects all images and gives them a max width of 100%. Without code similar to this, your images will not be able to resize on the fly. So with that public service announcement out of the way, now let's focus on creating margin horizontally between the thumbnails. Now it may be a bit counterintuitive, but I actually prefer to use padding instead of margin. So padding right, let's say 15 pixels. Now on its own, this will break the layout because 25% plus 15 pixels will result in more than 100% of the available width. But we can simply say box sizing, border box, and now the 15 pixels 
will be subtracted from the 25% width so that once again, it will equal a perfect 100%. And because we do not want there to be 15 pixels of padding right on the last column, we can simply apply a negative margin to the thumbnails container element. Margin right, negative 15 pixels. Perfect. Now let's also fine tune the vertical margin between the rows of images. Let's begin by zeroing out this default spacing, which is present because images are inline elements by default. So this means they can be affected by things like font size and line height. Now to counteract this, we can simply make them block level elements. So now we see the vertical spacing is gone and now we can provide a very specific vertical margin. So on our A elements, I will simply say margin bottom, 15 pixels. So now we have consistent spacing horizontally and vertically. Now all that remains is to add a fun hover effect for individual images. Let's hop over to our CSS. I will create a new rule, thumbnails, image, hover. So when an image is hovered over, let's rotate it a tiny bit clockwise and let's also give it a shadow. So transform, rotate, two degrees. Let's give it a shadow, box shadow. I want the shadow to be visible on all four edges, so I won't move horizontally or vertically, but I will control the spread to be seven pixels. And I will use a light black or a transparent black value. So let's save, see what that looks like. I like it. Now let's imagine that when we hover over one image, we want all of the other images to fade out and shrink a bit. So to do that, all we need to do is create a different rule in our style sheet select the thumbnails parent div and say when it is hovered over, select all images. Let's lower their opacity and let's also reduce their scale. So transform scale. Let's try 92%, 0.92. Now in our hover rule for the image that is actually being hovered over, let's be sure to set its scale to native or default one. Let's also set its opacity to one. So now, when we hover over one thumbnail, all of the others sit back a bit and let the hovered image steal the show. Now I would prefer that the rotation and the change in size happen smoothly instead of all at once in one millisecond. So to make the transition smooth, all we need to do is target this baseline rule for the thumbnail images, add a new declaration, transition, all properties should take 200 milliseconds. And to make it extra smooth, let's use the ease in out timing function. Much better. And that will bring this lesson on creating a photo gallery with a modal window to a close. As always, you can find a zip file of the finished product in the related files for this lecture. I encourage you to experiment with your own photo galleries. Have fun, and I will see you in the next lesson. Hello everyone. The lesson that you just watched is a snippet from my seven hour web design course. You can find a heavily discounted coupon code for the course in this video's description. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more web development tutorials. Thanks, bye.